Hey everyone, Sir Terminal here again. So there is one archetype that has been impressing me a lot over this past week, and that's gonna be Nasus Kindred. So if you haven't seen people play this deck, is it's really enabled by the buff to Hay Spike, and that's really the biggest, the, the probably one of the best cards in the whole deck. The idea is is that you're able to use Hay Spike on stuff like the Undying to consistently get value. Then you also play stuff like the buffed up crum crumble, triple spirit leash, triple rider calling, triple glimpse, right? Triple wings. So many different ways that you can actually enable killing your undying and just putting a lot of pressure on the opponent. The opponent has to eventually start blocking this unit. If they don't, they, stay, they start taking too much damage, which then, which then puts them potentially in range of atrocity. Now, I know we're only playing one atrocity, but part of that is because we have a lot of draw, and this deck kind of does suffer from being a little bit too bricky, so I feel like having two atrocity will make us a little bit too brick. Now, the other powerful part of this, of this deck is obviously the two champions, Kendra and Nasus. Nasus especially, with Haystpike, he, he grows so quickly. Because hate spike usually will count as you killing two different units, right? You kill your own unit, which is usually going to be doing dying, and you usually kill the opponent's unit as well, getting you two slate triggers into your Nasus. Kindred ends up working out really well as well, because slate is so cheap that even when you drop Kindred and only have one mana to spend, you're able to use her uh, the hate spike and then trigger her ability. We also play cards like Revenue, Revenue's Butcher to be able to effectively also trigger Kindred. So this deck kind of plays like a mid-range mid -range deck. I wouldn't call it control because we're not playing Vengeances, as you can see here. We're not playing Ruination. So it is a mid-range version of like of, of Shadow Owl's Shurima. Uh, I said that we aren't playing a lot of other cards like Merciless Hunter or Rock Hopper. Uh, so we're not going like the Nasus Trash game plan. We're kind of going more of a self-sacrifice package uh, game plan instead. He ends up doing really well into Kai'Sa decks. So that's usually one of the best matches for this deck. Uh, it does well into Pirates as well. Uh, so both of those are very two popular decks, which is why I see this deck kind of popping out a lot. Now, I feel like the deck, like I mentioned earlier, loses to itself more than anything. It feels really bad when you draw a bunch of Undines, for example, and no way to kill them. It feels really bad when you draw a, a, a bunch of Winds in the Waves, but no way to kill the opponent's unit. Uh, Rider Colin glimpse and spiritly stretch to help with that by giving you a lot of draw and making sure that you have at least some of your champions in your hand but it's not always guaranteed to work exactly like you expected so just keep that in mind the deck is really good and it can beat those super powerful decks but it's held back by the fact that it's just very very bricky so but anyways hope you enjoyed this nice this new version of nasus that's popping out of there in this past week and as always, if you like the content, please make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. Enjoy the games, and I'll see you all at the end of the video for some Mulligan tips. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Field the Rush. Ha. Huh. This is an Aqua one. I think Nas, I think this whole hand is a little bit too early. Honestly, if we get our Undyne, oh, that would be so good. If we had Undyne here, that would be so good. But instead, we get nothing. Instead, we get nothing. Ooh. This feels bad. Like, Undyne will feel so good here. Ah. Come on. Thank you. Because now, any avalanche or anything like that is just making our Undyne better. And the Undyne is going to just continue getting bigger and bigger. It, it survives the avalanches and survives the ravines and survives almost anything else that the opponent tries to do to it. We can kill it with the wings and the wave to get it bigger. We can kill it with a uh, glimpse. We can kill it with haste spike. Okay, so opponent decided that it was better to do that because the opponent knew that I was just going to be able to draw, right? I do think we go ahead and do the glimpse and just start making this undying as big as possible. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's start making... Oh, it's perfect. We even get the battle calling, so we can literally make this soon dying as big as possible. Um. So I think it, I think it had, I think I like the battle calling. I think I like the battle calling. I guess Kendra is not really gonna be a big efficient threat in this game. Trundle is not a big deal to me. 
The other option is that we do the bitch the butcher first. Maybe it is the butcher first. Yeah, let's do the butcher first. I like the butcher first. If the opponent somehow summons Stronto and decides to block, then they get punished, right? Balfis? I guess we can Balfis their Balfis, right? They want to have blockers for doing dying. So they want to have blockers for doing dying. And I don't think that's going to work out too hot for them. So they're going to have to block the... They're going to have to block with the faces of the old one. Otherwise, they're just taking all this damage. I guess they could have a whale. The problem is that we do need to kill this. We do need to kill this. So it's a little bit awkward. We could try to get the Kendra and then do the Hay Spike. That's one way we can get there. That's one way we can get there. Maybe maybe it is actually Kendra. Yeah, so that's the, that's the uh, whale that we talked about. It is probably going to be Kendra, right? The problem is that... Okay, we do have enough. We have enough. Yeah, let's go here. Opponent has 8, 11. Oh. Wow. What a roll. Ha. Huh. Interesting. Interesting hand. Interesting hand. Out of all the kindreds that we could have gotten. Do I force him to have the vengeance here? I guess we can force him to have the vengeance. We can force him to have the vengeance here for the Nasus. If they do the vengeance, they tap out of... Uh, they will tap out of the... Uh, of the girl. <laughs> of the field of rush. I'm saying the girl. Like, you know what? Let's do this hay spike right here. Let's do this hay spike right here. Just so that we get our Nasus big, bigger as well. And also our Undyne as big as possible. I want to be able to... Okay, so the opponent has feel the rush. They are not able to actually. They can't. F they cannot feel the rush next turn. There's no way they can feel the rush next turn, right? If they feel the rush this turn, then they're literally losing to so much on the Nasus play. Because the Nasus can kill the next Strondo that comes down. Because we because we also have the hay spike. Yeah, so they have to tap out of they have to tap out of it. They have to tap out of it. This is also risky. We could literally have so many answers for that. That's the first vengeance. Cool. Alright. I respect it. Who have the second vengeance? Who have the second vengeance? Who have the second vengeance for I think it's still Nasus. I think it's still Nasus. I think it's still Nasus here. Because if the opponent... If, if, so if the opponent goes like a field of rush, we're still able to beat it. We could have done winning the waves to get this even bigger. Maybe that was the answer. They can never do field of rush here. They can never do field of rush. I also do like the wings and the waves down so that the Nasus gets a little bit bigger. I like this. That way the Nasus gets a little bit bigger. My mistake was not doing this last turn, right? So now the opponent is going to have to have five. Five of their cards. Ooh. Alright. Alright. So we just attack like this. Needs to find a way to deal with both the Undyne and Nasus. It has to be second vengeance. Harshwins? Okay. Harshwins is good. Harshwins is good. I will give them that. Sure. Sure. Let's go ahead and... I don't want to play Kendra because I don't want to lose to Ruination. So I kind of don't feel like losing to Ruination. I guess we can Kendra now. 
and just kill the ice pillar at least. Because if the opponent does ruination, we still get the we still get the undying right back, right? Okay. Yeah, let's just go ahead and just uh Ooh. Ooh, that guy's gonna be strong. Wait, what if we do this? What if we do this, right? We battle feast and then siphoning strike, but we don't have any units, so it cannot be the battle feast. Think carefully. There is no one doing what has been done. Oh, we can. <sighs> the problem is the haste spike. So the problem here is that the haste spike will trigger this right away. I guess we can haste spike, battle feast, and siphoning strike. Uh, we also should have haste spike on the undying, by the way. That probably would have been better. But if we do that, the opponent just... Oh, well, opponent doesn't have mana for feel the rush. Opponent doesn't have mana for feel the rush. We still get a draw here. So we still get to refill our hand. And this becomes bigger. Yeah, so we gotta, we gotta go like that. We gotta go with the Ternassus. So we battle piece this. The, he loses the Ice Pillar. We can Siphon and Strike the Trundle, buffing our Nassus by 3 HP. So we make up for most of the stuff that we're losing here. Uh, we lose everything else, though, including the Kindred. So we lose everything else, including the Kindred. Actually, that's not true. Kindred, Kindred stays alive. Yeah, Kindred stays alive. Kendra stays alive, which is good. But we're down to just one card and opponent has four. But they tapped out of field and rush mana, so shouldn't be a big threat next turn. She who wanders doesn't matter because doing dying is already at 7 HP. This dies to a battle feast though, which is a problem. If opponent summons any unit, ruination, right? Has to be ruination here. Has to be ruination. And then just continue killing the Undying to survive. Because the problem with the Undying is that he's not a blocker. Oh no. Wait, 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 wait. We can kill our own Undying with Black Spear. We can kill our own Undying with Black Spear. We'll take the 10. We'll take the 10, but the She Who Wonders will die. We lose our draw, though. Kendra levels up. We lose our draw. We lose our draw. Opponent's gonna have to have another Harsh Winds. Wait, why not take the free 10 damage? Don't, don't, doesn't take the free 10 damage. So we also have the Undyne, which is coming back, and now we get Atrocity, so this should be game. Oh, they didn't take- I mean, the tempering damage didn't matter, because we ended up top decking exactly what we needed. Oh, wow. Yeah, that She Who Wonders was not enough, so GG's. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Echo Cillian. I think we should be okay versus it. We do have Rider Negation, and we have Kendra, which is really good. Ah. I think Kendra is just so good. I don't know about Nasus. I feel Nasus comes a little bit too late. And Winston and the Wave is also kind of awkward. I like the Battle Feast. Because they do have a lot of one health units a lot of times. Okay, Rider Calling is good. So, okay, Fading Icon is also good. I guess Fading Icon is bad against Cillian. So if the opponent has exactly Cillian into Time Bomb, this is bad. If it's Chronomancer, we push 3 damage, yeah. So it's gonna be silly in here. If they predict exactly... Okay, it's also bad into Draw Border. If they predict exactly into Time Bomb, this would be a problem. Otherwise, they're gonna have to find a way to deal with Kendrick, because Kendrick's gonna slowly... Oh, our hand is not great, though. Kendrick's gonna slowly start getting rid of their board. I am kind of scared of that Time Bomb, though. Like, really scared of that Time Bomb. Okay, I'm always I'm always willing to sacrifice this, so I'm always willing to sacrifice this. 
because this is always dying to a time bomb and the less unit the opponent has the more efficient our kendra becomes right unfortunately, unfortunately opponent ended up getting just a second draw border so we're gonna start by hitting that draw border um and it's not perfect I don't want to play the wins in the way. I'm just too scared time bomb just getting rid of all my units. Like all these units only have one HP. So I think it's Kendra, right? And we're gonna write up calling the prey. And we have Black Spear as a backup to kill Echo if the opponent summons it. If the opponent goes for the Mystic Shot on the Prey. It still enables our Black Spear, allowing us to potentially kill, I guess, Cillian. Yeah, that's the Mystic, right? So the Mystic shot happens. We could have also just Balfis, which was probably better now that I think about it, right? Balfis was probably better. We're going to go ahead and just kill this guy. We still get rid of both of his boar. No reason to attack. We could have also just attack first. Actually, we missed on four damage. We should always attack first, because opponent is obviously never going to block there. Cillian is a man counting down. Can you guess my favorite herb? What time, Sage? Hmm. This is a joke, right? Let's go ahead and do it this way. Let's say that the opponent tries to level up Echo. We can Balthus our own unit. We can Balfis our own unit, deny the Echo level up. If the opponent somehow kills this, we can always do the wins and the Prey. Yep, regardless, he's not getting value, which is what we're looking for. It's not getting value, so we can go ahead and do this. The only downside here is that we kind of just lost our, lost, our, lost our last unit here. The good thing is that our Kendra levels up. So let's say that the opponent has access to Quicksand. That's the only punish to our attack. So Quicksand is a big punish here. Opponent has enough for Quicksand plus other cards. So I don't think it's correct. Well, if he has it, actually, you know what? If he has the Quicksand... I think I'm okay, right? Because we have a second Kendra. We are going to let that Echo stay alive, though, which is a little bit unfortunate. Opponent has already committed double Mystic Shot. So the chances of them having another Mystic Shot should be low. And then this is going to get us Nasus, potentially. I guess three, I mean, three chances, right? Of getting us Nasus. I guess if we get a, if we get a second Kendra, we can always do double Spirit Journey. If we can keep his boar small, he should have a way to kill us. So we go here. Kendra's also getting bigger. Okay, there's an Asus, which is an 8-8, which is also harder for him to block. Because the more units that we kill now, the less the less opponent has for next turn. Right? Now, opponent could hit the corner break here, which we're kind of annoying. If they, don't, if, they, if they just go like this, I just play Nasus, right? I do my own stunts. Actually, no. Let's take that 7. Let's take that 7. See what they do first. If they play the corner break... I guess we are going to go for Nasus. They will have to hit double corner break. So I'm okay playing around a single corner break. Okay, opponent decided to tap out of one source of damage. So then let's go ahead and do Nasus. Let's say they have the corner break. They don't get any value because we didn't kill any units. So all they get is the rally. So they will have to have the corner break into a sober. Full shot. Okay. I'm okay with that. Let's remember though, I mean opponent has to block. Opponent has to block. We can we can attack with Kendra and Nasus. Yeah, so they get to kill one of my units here. We can attack with Kendra and Nasus. We do lose to the quicksand though. 
So once again, the quicksand is the big punish. So if we go here, this should be okay. If an opponent has to block with at least one unit, which means that they start slowly losing the units. If they don't block Kindred, we can always do this glimpse. Yeah, so there you go. They're gonna block the they're gonna block the Kindred. So he's gonna look for the Chrono Break again. Okay, if they if they do it like this, they're leveling up the Nassos, which is even better for us. I think that's each, that's that's even better for us. Yeah, there's the quicksand, like we have talked about. So trying to absorber. Absorber. So if we glimpse here, they lose both units. And NASA still levels up. Perfect. So by doing the glimpse here, we get plus two plus two on Kendra. NASA gets plus one. And then he gets another plus one. We have a good blocker if the opponent does happen to find the corner break. And all their units are doing less damage. If they don't find the corner break, they lose the Cillian here. If they find the corner break, they do get two they, they do get two cards though, which is the only annoying part. But again, we do have good blockers now. Because we can do fading icon. We can deny the second echo trigger by doing glimpse. Or doing the spirit journey. Alright, there's that chrono break. Opponent also will have just auto loss to um Well I've also auto loss by the way to um what's it called? To right negation. It can be undone. There's no reason not to attack with everything. I guess the only reason not to attack is actually because we get if he had, if he attacked with the chronomancer, we get value. So he probably doesn't want to attack with everything. He just wants to attack with Echo. So we deny it with the glimpse. And that should be okay. Opponent still loses the Cillian. Echo is still in the field though, which is a problem. And we get the random negation a little bit too early. Let's go ahead and do the Undying. Still think I'm in a good spot. We can Spirit Journey the Echo. We can Spirit Journey the Echo to stop him from getting value while having Rider Negation backup. I guess let's go here. Now, Echo is also a good blocker, so opponent, if opponent is going to attack, they need to attack with Echo first. And we have blockers for everything else. Time bomb. So we can just sacrifice this into that, and we're okay. See what I've learned? I'm not okay. I'm not scared of that damage. I'm not scared of that damage. I think we just win now. I think opponent just gave us the win. I think opponent literally just gave us the win. We have run negation to stop the corner break. Opponent already committed double. Opponent already committed double uh, mystic shot. So the opponent would need it to have top deck, a chrono break, and predicting to the second one here. That's the only way they win. So it needs to be predicting into the chrono break and already having one in their hand. Because we can deal with the first one. Opponent already tapped out of um of right negation mana. The time bomb is only getting one. I guess we lose to three full time bombs, right? So we do lose to time bomb, time bomb, time bomb. There's the corner break. We deny it. That one came from the right, so there is a chance that he actually has the second corner break. There's no way, right? Okay, there we go. The problem now is that we do lose to... So we do lose to uh, a Mystic Shot. So we lose to the third Mystic Shot. We lose to the third Mystic Shot. We attack like this. That way, when... Uh, Nasus kills the Diego, the Kindred will get this the value. Gets the draw border, which is not a fearsome blocker, but does let him block the Kindred. So they get to block the Kindred regardless. Wow. This is actually nuts. 
This is actually nuts. So we lose. So we're going to lose the Nasus unless we do this. But if we do this, the Diego stays alive. That's not true because we have Black Spear. Wow. That was the third drop border too. You got to be kidding me. So third drop border to give him the win. Because we have killed two of them already. If we go like this, all we're doing is just letting this, this Echo come back. I cannot let him predict, right? I cannot let him predict anymore. Think carefully. There is no one doing what's been done. So I like the spirit journey. I can't let him predict anymore. If the opponent gets another time bomb, we lose. If the opponent gets the last mystic, we lose. But letting him predict is worse than everything else. Who predict into it right here? We could also just draw our atrocity, maybe, you know? Ah. I can't believe he got this last draw border. That's actually unbelievable. That's actually unbelievable. Two cards, and they get it. Yeah, GG's. Man, he needed exactly draw border. Wow. GG's. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Pirate Aggro. Seems like everybody's trying to play this deck tonight, trying to climb us the last minute as quick as possible. Um, I kind of like the Butcher. I like the Butcher so we can sacrifice the Fading Icon. Okay, well, now that we have the Haste Bike, maybe we don't have to sacrifice it. Okay, hey, Double Fading Icon. Okay, so with Double Fading Icon, we definitely can do it now. Because my concern is that this is going to die to make it rain. So maybe we actually pass. Maybe the correct place to pass first. So I think the correct place to pass and wait for the opponent to commit their two mana first. Perfect. So we go here. We can go. We can go butcher. I think it's hay spike actually. I think it's actually hay spike first. I think I like the haste spike first. I like the haste spike first. We have a blocker for the precious pet. This will potentially make our next set of units bigger. Which is the reason why I wanted to do it this way. We can also freely attack with the fading icon now. And the opponent's not gonna block because they, if they don't because they, they're not gonna block because they're gonna have misfortune, right? The Fading Icon will have 2 HP, which means that this Fading Icon will not be vulnerable to make it rain. Now, he does have make it rain anyways, but we still got a second Fading Icon. And we get a Butcher. So the opponent still doesn't get to attack. We go here. Now what? Now what? We trade. Opponent is down to four mana, meaning that we don't have to worry for Rekta Sermon. So we play Kindred, which lets us kill the Jagged Butcher for free. And we get a Bio Piece. So we can attack with Kindred. We don't want to trade our Butcher. We don't want to trade our Butcher. But we can attack with Kindred, and then we can write a call in the Butcher. I guess opponent could have access to Fervor, which would be unfortunate. So if they have access to Fervor, it's such a big punish. Okay, never mind. Guys, but not that good. Okay, so if we do this, all we're doing. I don't think it's I don't think it's correct anymore. Because we're losing a, I guess we lose a blocker that's gonna lose anyways. And we guess because this guy's gonna die regardless, right? Yeah, this guy's gonna die regardless, blocking. So we might as well do it now. And at least we gotta draw out of it. At least we got a draw out of it, which gives us a second Kendra. For us to be able to play Kendra and then Nasus, right? And it makes the Nasus bigger as well, because we end up killing two units. We go ahead and just kill the Misfortune. That's okay. We play the second Kendra. We our Nasus is a nine. Opponent only has three cards. Yeah. Now he could have the sermon for this. Which will be kind of annoying. 
So we could have the red test ceremony for this. I think we have to summon the Nasus. So we have to summon the Nasus because we level up the Nasus with the uh, Plains Beyond, right? So this is lethal. If the opponent has sermon, we can just glimpse the Kindred, which puts us with 10 stacks. And then Nasus attacks, levels up. And everything that the opponent does is reduced by two, by one, sorry. The only downside is that that's still going to be two, four, six, eight, nine, because the opponent can just keep his unit alive. That's still going to be nine damage. But we have double Balfies. Ooh, okay. Huh, okay. That's a nice punish. That's a nice punish. So opponent ends up not having anything, at least nothing on the uh on the block. Maybe they're just disconnected, I guess. I wonder if it's actually correct for us to bow fees here. What if it is? What if it's correct to bio here? Because we can bio the rear guard and then bio it again next turn, right? So we can bow the rear guard and bow it again next turn, and this gives us more blockers. It does mean that the opponent can play a one drop now, though. Ah, of course. He hits the misfortune, make it rain. Okay, but it's fine. We now know that the opponent doesn't have Fervor in their hand unless they top deck it, which means that the second bow piece should be a bigger punish. So we get it pretty much just we just trade a heal for heal, right? We just trade a heal for heal. Um, sure. And this should be game. We only take one damage and Nasus levels up. Opponent, ha opponent has no fearsome blockers. Opponent has no fearsome blockers. Any fearsome blocker he summons here is going to die to the Black Spear. So it should be it with the next attack that we get. Okay, we were able to stabilize though. Those, those double Balfies helped a lot. And I think it was correct. I think it was correct to do what we did. Where we this where we did the spider last turn. Um interesting. So you're hoping to have double Ionacaboros here? I guess it's potential, but yeah. The fearsome. The fearsome of no fearsome. So GG's. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Kaisa. Uh, my opponent's name is very long. <laughs> okay, this is technically a good matchup for us but we do need to find more stuff right like early stuff nah i mean undyne is nice and we have the spirit leash to draw we do want to have access to okay we have a lot of draws so that's a good thing we do want to have access to kendra kendra early makes a big difference hay spike also makes a big difference to be able to stop like a baller we have a lot of ways to answer their kaisa turn which is the good thing about this deck right we also get to put a lot of pressure because of the Undying. So opponent ends up having a pretty hard time dealing with a big Undying just constantly like hitting them, right? So Yeah, two options. I guess we could do the battle feast right now. We could do the battle feast right now. Which would t stop us from taking that damage. I kind of like the bow piece right now. Because if the opponent attacks with the brow wing, we are able to kill the brow wing with the hay spike. Right? So if the opponent attacks here with the brow wing, it means that on a future turn, we're able to kill it. Now, we can just go ahead and do the rider calling here and potentially get Kendra. And also make our Undyne already get 3 3. Not Kendra, not Kendra, but it's okay. No Kendra, but it's okay. Because we get her right now. So, <laughs> no Kendra, but it's okay because we get her right now. So now our opponent's in a tough spot because we have haste right now. They could have a uh, Concerted Strike, right? So, Concerted Strike. Uh, Concerted Strike would have been a good punish. The opponent doesn't have it. So, we can go ahead and attack like this. Just push this three damage. And we're going to go ahead and kill that. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just kill this guy. That way we put the mark. Oh wait. Oh no. 
Interesting. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know that interaction because the thing gets killed first, right? So the thing gets killed first, so that's why it happens that way. We have the crumble for the Kai'Sa, though. So that's good to know. The haste pack happens before the kill goes. So if you target the same unit on the haste pack, that's always going to happen. Okay. All right. All right. We just don't have to tap out of crumble then, right? We'll have to take that 11 damage. We'll take that 11 damage. We'll do the crumble. And that will enable our big Nasus. Opponent eventually has to start getting rid of our units. Okay. The problem here is Rally. So if the opponent has a Rally, we're in trouble. So if the opponent has a Rally... I think I have to be okay with our Rally, right? I think I have to be okay with the rally. The opponent has the rally. We still survive. We're just going to have to lose all our units. Because what happens is if the, if the opponent attacks... Yeah, if the opponent attacks with the elder, okay, fine. He, they need to start... They need to start actually blocking eventually. Because this... Um... Okay, the rally here is a little bit more annoying now. Because he can put the rally on the Valor. Give him access. Okay. Alright. Every time I'm scared of the rally, opponent just goes with something else. So, they need to be a little bit careful here. Kind of like this attack. Doesn't take any blocks. If they play Kai'Sa, we just crumble, right? If they play Kai'Sa, we just crumble? What if we just play Nasus? We can just go here. I think we go here first. I think this is safer. We can always play Nasus after the fact. After what, after we see what the opponent does. This is still killing their scout unit. Which is super important for us. Just the Kai'Sa. We're not going to let that Kai'Sa uh, stay alive. It's just too much value. It's just too much value. So what we can do is that we can crumble. We have blockers for everything. So we kill the first Kai'Sa. We also didn't want to play the waves, by the way. Because I want to make sure I have enough mana for crumble plus rat negation next turn. Do we have enough? So this is going to be 3 plus 7. That's going to be 10. So I guess we could have done it. I guess we could have done it and kept that blocker. Yeah, I guess we could have done that and kept that blocker. Kendra levels up here. So she's not too much of a punish. But this also lets me play Nasus with Rider Negation Mana. So that's also another reason why not to play the Winston the Waves. Because now we can go ahead and do this, right? So now we have Nasus and Rider Negation. And opponent is locked down, so they lose the game. So even if the opponent gets Kai'Sa here, because we have the Nasus. We're in a, like, because we have the crumble, we're able to kill the Kai'Sa even through a Rider Negation, because we have our own Rider Negation. And if they don't play Kai'Sa, we just play the Nasus and just level him up and win the game. So, GG's. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Stolen Conch. Playing Poppy. Ah, huh, Poppy. Lulu. So, Haystack seems really good, and Kendra also seems really good. Maybe we get rid of the Rider, Rider Colin because we want to get early blockers. Perfect. Fading, Arter, Fading Icon is probably the best early blocker that we could get in this matchup. Probably the best one that we could get in this matchup. So... We can play Fading Icon on 2, giving me a blocker for potentially a Lulu attack. We get access to the Prey, which we can sacrifice with Haste Spike. Ideally, I want to sacrifice the Undying with Haste Spike, though. And we want to probably do a when Kendra's on the field. Now, the problem is that the Kendra does lose to get excited. So I need to be careful about that. An opponent might just rush us down. We will need to get Biofis. We also need to get Biofis. Um, so we need to get Biofis. We keep this as a blocker. We have Haste Spike. Yeah, we have to keep this as a blocker. We have Haste Spike. 
to prevent his damage. Hmm. Interesting. So... <sighs> that's five damage. That's, that's five damage if we do the haste spike. If we don't do the haste spike, we might be okay. Let's go here first. If the opponent gets greedy and summons one more unit, we get another blocker. Okay. So opponent's going like this. So we are going to have to commit the haste spike. We're going to have to commit the haste spike no matter what. What we can do, I guess, is... Ooh, do we have to actually commit the haste spike? I think we do. I think we have to commit the haste spike. We can go here. Because this is going to give us a husk. Which we can trigger with the butcher. And be able to block one of the other units, right? So we want to kill the chumpers. Also because we don't want him to draw Lulu, right? Oh, we even get Fury. So then we can go here. And this gets one extra health. And now we have a good blocker for his units. We probably have to sacrifice the prey though. Ooh, doesn't do anything. I think we go ahead and summon the Kindred. If the opponent has to get excited or something like that, I think I'm okay living with that. I think I'm okay living with the get excited here. Maybe not though. Yeah, yeah, because we're gonna have to discard something for it. And they're still taking a lot of damage here. Still taking six damage here. I guess we could have just passed as well and kept the Rata Negation, but I feel like I wanna keep the Rata Negation mana for later. This is Lulu. Let's go ahead and do this. Opponent could have another Chumpers. It would have to be like Poro Cannon into Chumpers, I guess. So we go here. That way we kill Lulu and also get this guy to be bigger. You know what? I kind of like this. I kind of like this. We sacrifice a Prey because he's going to die anyways. We stop his we stop his draw. And Nasus is now a 9-9. Nine -nine. An opponent has to start blocking. So Nasus is going to level up. Because if the opponent doesn't block any of these two. Yeah, so then we play Nasus. Because we did the Rider Column and sacrificing our own units, we're able to play Nasus here. We attack with everything. Which means that the, if the opponent blocks any of these two units, he has to block one of these two units. Because otherwise he loses, right? Because this is fearsome. So they have to block one of these two units. And once they block that, we get to 10, unless they have a Mystic Shot, which of course they do. <laughs> of course they have a Mystic Shot, because why not? We get hit by a big open attack. Two, four, six, seven. We do have the Siphoning Strike. Okay, we have a good blocker now. Okay, so this is... Ah, that was great. That was great. Not only that, but we can the Glimpse Beyond, which lets me... Yeah, so we, we have a good blocker now. This is literally the perfect draw. We can do the Glimpse Beyond, allowing us to actually trigger the Nasus first, right? I guess we can go like... So... Huh. Opponent, the most damage that the opponent can do is exactly how he did it right here. So if we go like this, opponent only pushes three. The cool... Yeah, they cool glimpse their own unit. Or, or uh, sorry, they cool mystic shot their own unit. Which maybe made it better to actually block the mayor. Because that committed to get excited. But yeah, GG's. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Pirate. Pirate aggro. Uh, it should be a decent matchup for us. We have the haste spike. We have the undying. The butcher, honestly, I don't hate it. But I feel like I need early blockers. No, let's keep the butcher. There's a lot of things that we can draw that we that allows us to play the butcher right away. And not glimpse, not glimpse, not glimpse. We can do the undying and have the butcher right after. Okay, Balfis is pretty good. So Balfis is amazing because Balfis lets me do this. Balfis lets me kill this precious pet and have a haste spike to block both damage here. 
So we take zero damage. We take zero damage. Um, huh. The only downside is that I don't want to give quick attack to this guy. I really don't want to give quick attack to the dying. I'm going to actually keep the butcher back, even if we take damage next turn. Is that true? Three, three, five, six. I think I take the six. I think I take the six. No one's the wiser. Yeah, I think I'm willing to take the six. We can play Kendra here. If the opponent doesn't attack. Okay, all right. Unfortunately, we go here. We still have a good block. And we have to take more than six, right? We can just kill the Misfortune. Okay, if the opponent doesn't attack with Misfortune, even better. We only take that amount. Kind of like killing this guy first. Although this guy is also kind of tempting. I think we kill here, because this guy is never going to push that damage again. The problem is going to be the opponent having access to... Uh, the opponent's gonna have access to the. So opponent's gonna have access to the Riptide Sermon. So I'm just gonna take my damage now while I can, and then the opponent goes for Riptide here. Ooh, that's not a Riptide. That is not a Riptide. Here's the question then. What if he's Rider Colin? I'm gonna start with the Rider Colin. Opponent could have Fervor. Opponent could have fervor here to kill, try to kill the Kendrick. So I was hoping that I could high roll into a second Kendrick. We don't get it. So Kendrick just levels up. Kendrick just levels up. We will take five sits. We go down to sits. Is going down to sits worth it? No, I think I want to do this. I don't want to go down to sits. Okay. So Kendra levels up, we're able to block, we only take three, we only take three and go up to nine. And now we have the Nasus with Atrocity backup. Ooh, we get to draw the Haste Spike too, so we, we take zero now. So the Nasus with Atrocity backup means that we pretty much just win. Yeah, that's not gonna work. It's interesting, he, he wants to try to do it that way. Problem is that he still gets punished. Uh, we could have done doing dying to be honest. Yeah, we should have done doing dying because now we lose to a make it rain. So now we lose to a make it rain because we decided to get greedy. But it's okay. NASA still just wins the game, right? That was a slight misplay on my part, by the way. It had to be undoing dying because the make it rain just punished that. Also loses to a fervor. But we just play NASA's. Opponent has no blockers. We have lethal in the open and we have atrocity to back it up. Opponent's gonna need to draw a second Anna Akaboros to be able to drop the uh, to be able to kill the asses. Okay. Alright. Alright, alright. Let's go ahead and attack anyways, right? Might as well. Might as well just attack. We get the uh that way we get the spell shield. And we completely guarantee our victory. Although I don't see him having any way to beat this. With seven mana, there's no way he has lethal from seven HP. So, yeah, we got super greedy with that haste spike. I should have completely lost this game because of that misplay. But because we had the Nasus and Atrocity, it ends up not mattering. And that's game. So, GG's. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed those games. I think they were a lot of fun. Uh, you can see how powerful this deck can be in such a situation. And also how accurate it can be. When you don't get like the right hands, right? If you don't get the right tools, if you don't get the hay spike, sometimes you need that right of calling. Uh, sometimes you end up getting like double and dying and your hands become really awkward or your Kendra is vulnerable to a lot of things and she only has three health. So the deck is awkward sometimes, but it's also very good when everything clicks. When everything clicks, it ends up feeling so good. And what I really like about this deck is that every game feels very close and very back and forth. It's not like you're blowing the opponent out. Uh, so it ends up being a lot of fun as you saw there with the Echocillion game like that was pretty nutty there and how close that got But you know, that's why I love card games. That's why I love this game because 
you have decks like this that actually are so fun to play right but anyways in terms of mulligan i think i always want to go for i want to keep one hay spike i want to keep fading icon i want to keep one dying and i want to keep kindred so those are the four cards that i'm looking for fading icon is there because he's a good blocker while also giving us a sacrificial target right hay spike is just there because he's so good and you have a lot of cards that you can use to sacrifice like the wings the undying the pay uh the prey from the fading icon to actually get you there and obviously undying just push, push a lot of pressure and kindred those kindred things so those are the cards that i'm looking for to actually get my game plan going and then we kind of go from there but anyways hope you enjoyed the games today as always if you like our video please be sure to like it below and subscribe to us we post a lot of videos every single day you can also find us on twitch at twitch september where we stream three to four times a week and you can also find us on discord and twitter the links to those are both in the description below thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all again tomorrow